whenever you have uh, any design in your hand let it be a retail or uh, any other hospitality industry which you do or the corporate offices whatever the thing uh, against the what purely retail wants is there any approach difference which you uh, find in that and then uh, definitely what are the uh, sectors of the retail which you find attractive or whether retail is attractive at all to you uh, just give your thoughts about that uh, well, uh, as you rightly said that we are uh, concentrating not only on retail but any aspect that comes to designing. So mm -hmm. uh, any product or any project that comes our way, uh, it has its own uh, it has its own requisites. So mm -hmm. uh, by default, any process that we start, uh, the understanding is the final output that is expected out mm -hmm. of that project. Yeah. So when it comes down to retail, yes, uh, the exciting part in the retail part of uh, the segment for us would be when we are designing a, a, a sort of a specialized place mm -hmm. or a specialized uh, showroom which uh, defines or which is focused towards a particular product. Mm -hmm. So obviously when that is there, uh, the emphasis is always towards the product mm -hmm. and not towards the overall interiors. But yes, interiors does form in a very important format when we are looking at the creating of the entire ambience. Mm -hmm. So uh, the focus always has been towards the products uh, mm -hmm. when we are doing any sort of a retail uh, this thing. Okay. But at the may, uh, at the same time, like when we are looking around with the the the, the overall approach that has gone into the design fraternity, uh, the ambience obviously plays a very important role. But there is a very thin line where you supersede the interiors over the products. So right. that is where the balance is to be attained in the retail and that's where our focus is when we are doing any sort of retail design. So retail you find attractive? Uh, it is, okay. yes, because there, uh, as I said, the challenge is not to cross over where mm -hmm. your, in, uh, the, your core is your interiors or your designing and sure. you don't want to supersede the product itself. So right. you right. would obviously want to balance that that okay. is the trick. So challenges are something that our firm obviously enjoys uh, okay. encouraging. So good, good to know about it. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, like he said, we also work on uh, various kinds of projects, mm. whether it's retail, commercial, residential, and hospitality. Mm. And uh, within the retail spectrum, we have uh, worked on a larger scale mall kind of project, but we've also worked on very small boutiques, and we find them both very interesting because uh, the way you approach each is kind of very different. Like a mall is all about uh, you know, how you're going to bring footfall and how you're going to actually make it attractive to the customer, create walk-ins, create this entire uh, experience. You know, and other than the actual shopping, you need other facilities which you have to really think about, like a food court or entertainment spaces. Mm -hmm. So that's one sort of a retail experience that you're talking about. And the other one is, uh, today, you know, because of this whole uh, e-commerce and everything going uh, online also, the smaller uh, brick and mortar stores mm -hmm. do need something to sort of, you know, help people walk into. Mm -hmm. So you need to have that uh, experience that somebody wants to come back the second time. The same product may be available in five different stores, but why would I go to this one particular store mm -hmm. the second time? Mm -hmm. The reason's got to be the experience of that store. So I think that is what makes retail really attractive for us because what you have to understand is uh, understand the product, mm -hmm. understand where the client is coming from, you know, what is his uh, core mm -hmm. in terms of branding, how does he want to really place himself in that market, which, uh, what kind of people is he expecting to, you know, walk into that yeah. space, like different, uh, you know, e each product will have a different clientele that will, you know, they will want to get in. So I think placing and understanding that whole core before you actually get into the designing is very, very important. And I think that background research and study yeah. and, uh, you know, the market research which you sort of do, the empathy for that prod product yeah, and project is very idea. important. And then you sort of get into the ideating and uh, sure. the space itself. Right. So okay. I think that's how it sort of becomes very interesting and attractive. Every project becomes different. Okay. For example, we've actually worked with a brand where uh, we've done six different stores for them in four or five different cities and each one is actually different from the other okay. because uh, even though the product remains the same but you know they want to create a different experience for one city versus another city so I think that really changes the way you're yeah. looking at retail. Thanks to the client who is thinking about such ideas yeah. also <laughs> otherwise there is always a copy paste happens actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good to know about this thing. As an architect and purely in terms of uh, like running the office, retail mm -hmm. and office projects are always very good mm -hmm. for, for any practice because 
of a faster turnout time. Mm. That being said, I ag really agree with Shilpa what she said, you know, that you really need to put a lot of thought behind mm. a lot of uh, like the, the products they have or the stuff they have and also think about the user experience eventually. Because yeah. uh, uh, going from a, see the whole idea is to transform the uh, retail experience from a purely utilitarian one to a dynamic one, you know. So there is, like there are stores where you just pack a lot of stuff, you know, stack it, stack it, stack it, everything. And it's, it's just too claustrophobic. And then there are stores where, uh, you know, things are evenly spaced out. For example, you take uh, like, uh, like an Apple store, mm. okay. It's all white, you know, all things are laid out very fine. So you get that sense of exclusivity. So it is just about how you think in terms of user experience, mm. which I always tend to do. Also, I really agree with Mihir, what he said is, you know, you as a designer, you always want to get go overboard. While in terms of designing, you know, I want this kind of a ceiling, that kind of a flooring. But eventually, you have to uh, focus on the product, which is why the, the particular brand or the company is hiring you. So yeah, it's like um, when a singer sings, it's not important at what he want to sing. It's like a what <laughs> audience want to hear to you. So and and, so and like getting that balance at times can be really difficult. Yeah. Because as a designer, you really want to do stuff. And eventually, you know, the company will say, okay, so the store looks really nice. Mm -hmm. My product is just gone. Yeah. On the side. <laughs> it has to be two way communication. Absolutely. Be, Otherwise, putting your force is not right, actually. You're right. Fantastic.